My wife's cousin shoved this Seiko automatic in my hand a while back. It was a complete non-runner, as you can see. It looks in fairly bad shape. Now I'm quite certain that this watch has never been serviced in its lifetime, and so it's well overdue for a complete strip down, a clean, and lubrication. The movement has come to a complete stop and will not wind, and I'm guessing that over the years the oils and greases have dried up and are acting as an abrasive rather than a lubricant. The case is quite mucky, so let's start by removing some of the crud before we remove the movement from the watch case. Here I'm using pegwood, as it's hard enough to remove dirt and grime, but it's soft enough so that it does not scratch or damage the stainless steel case. Now I've removed the bulk of the grime, I can unscrew the case. Now I want to remove the crown and stem. This is a spring-loaded setting lever. So to release the stem, I need to press down on the setting lever in the divot and the stem will be released. Now I need to remove the movement from the case. And I can replace the winding crown. Now I'm just aligning the hands to make it a little bit easier to remove them. To protect the dial, I'm just using a poly bag. I can use my hand levers to lift the watch hands and they come off fairly easily. Next I need to remove the dial. And this dial is just friction fitted, there are no dial screws. So a little bit of gentle prising will allow the dial to be released from the movement. Now I'm going to protect the dial and hands up by placing them in a dust tray. There is a circlip which retains the day disc. I can lift this away using my hand levers. And now I can use a little bit of Rodico to lift away the day disc. Now the movement was stopped because it was not being wound automatically. So I have wound the movement manually and it has started. Let's take a look at the performance. So I'm just placing this on my time grapher and I can see that it's not too good really. The amplitude is rather low at 190 something degrees. And in one position it's showing a plus 35 
second a day gain, in another position it's even worse. So I'm going to continue to strip this down. I start by removing the oscillating weight. And now I'll just remove the balance assembly. Now the second reduction wheel and pinion is held secure with a left-handed screw. So I'm just going to remove that. And now I can remove the power from the watch by releasing the click spring. And with the power removed, I can safely remove the ratchet wheel. And as you can see, it's quite dirty and it's quite clear the reason why this watch would not wind up. So let's continue and we can remove the pallet fork. Let's remove the calendar works. We start by removing the cover plate, which is retained with three standard screws and one small cross-headed screw. And with the screws removed, I can remove the cover plate and I'm advancing the calendar train so that the calendar wheel is not fouling the lower cover plate and that allows me to remove it easily. I can remove the hour wheel and the calendar intermediate wheel, the minute wheel, the day disc and the calendar driving wheel. I need to remove the Canon pinion, so I'm using my Canon pinion remover. And now I'm just removing the plastic spacer movement ring. This is clipped in place. Turning the movement over again, I can remove the main train wheel bridge. And this is secured with three screws. And once those screws are removed, it comes away fairly easily. So now I can remove the rest of the train wheels and the barrel. Not forgetting, of course, the click spring. And of course, you can see here that the keyless works is now exposed. So the next job is to remove the keyless works.
The pull and first reduction wheel are held with this circlip. So I've just removed that and that's exposed quite a lot of dirt and grime on the pole bearing. And the uh, first reduction wheel is in an awful state underneath here. So let's open the barrel and have a look at the mainspring. As you can see, the old lubrication is in a really poor state. So I've removed the barrel arbor and I can start to remove the spring from the barrel. And that's it, the movement has been completely stripped down and I've cleaned all the parts. And now, of course, it's time for reassembly. Now, as you can see, um, I can start off by reassembling the train of wheels. And in goes the escape wheel. The third wheel. And now the center seconds wheel. Now I need to prepare the cover plate. I'm going to just remove these at shock settings and I'm going to make sure that the, the jewels are spotlessly clean. And once I'm happy that they're 100% clean, I can reassemble all these and use my automatic oiler and oil from the underside.
and I'm applying here mainspring braking grease to the barrel wall. And now it's time to wind the mainspring back into the barrel. And for this, I'm using my mainspring winders. Now I'm not 100% happy with this particular mainspring. It looks pretty old and fatigued to me. So I will be ordering a, a brand new one for this particular movement. And I'll be looking for one of those to be delivered shortly. But for now, I just want to test the movement and see what improvements we can make in the meantime. And now with the mainspring back in the barrel, I can refit the barrel arbor. And I can snap the barrel lid back on. So with the barrel reassembled, let's place that back in with the train of wheels. And now of course, we also need to refit the keyless works.
and continuing with our train wheel bridge reconstruction, we're just going to refit the first reduction wheel and its pole to the, uh, to the plate. And now I can refit the plate to the movement. And when I'm confident that all the pivots are located in their respective pivot holes, I can re-secure the plate to the movement with the free retaining screws. And now I can refit the ratchet wheel. And the second reduction wheel can go back into place now. And I'm just testing to make sure that the, the pole is doing its job. Now it's time to refit the escapement. We'll start with the pallet fork. So I'm just placing a little bit of wind on the mainspring so that I can test the operation of the pallets. And I'll lubricate the pallet stones. And now I can refit the balance assembly.
That's all good. Now I can remove the upper and lower shock settings and make sure that they're spotlessly clean and lubricate them. And I can use my automatic oiler to do that. Now with the escapement back in place, I just want to replace the movement ring and that just snaps back into place. And I just want to lubricate all the lower bearings. Back on with the Canon pinion. And the minute wheel. The driving wheel for the calendar. The calendar disc. And the calendar intermediate wheel. the hour wheel and the corrector wheel and now I can fit the lower cover plate as you can see this has the calendar jumper spring integral Now I can fit the upper cover plate. And if you remember, this is secured with three screws plus one very small cross headed screw. And I can just give that a quick check just to make sure that the calendar is jumping over. And that looks okay. And I'm testing the rapid date change.
So that's the day driver. We'll just put on the day disc now and we'll make sure that the jumper spring is located correctly. And we can put back the circlip. And once again, we'll just give that a quick test. And that all looks good. Now I'm just going to demagnetize the watch. Right then, let's give this another check on the timing machine and see where we are. And as you can see, that is significantly better than before. The amplitude is higher, but I would expect it to be even more higher than that before it was around 197 degrees of amplitude. And now it's over 240 degrees of amplitude. Changing the position of the movement, I can see that there is a slight increase in performance at but I would expect this to be at a minimum 260 degrees of amplitude. Placing the movement on my watch analyzer, I can see that there is an issue when the movement is dialed down, which seems to rectify when it's in the dial up position. I disassembled the lower shock setting again, cleaned and re-lubricated it, and now the movement is running at a much more healthy amplitude of over 260 degrees. I can be happy with that, especially considering how worn this movement is. Now I'm not going to be polishing this watch to a factory fresh state, but I do want to at least hand it back to my wife's cousin, looking better as well as functioning better. So I'm going to clean and buff up the case and make it look more presentable, and it's probably a good idea to replace the scratched glass as well. And now I can just reassemble the dial and hands. And I can place the movement back into the nice clean watch case. I'll apply a little bit of silicone grease to the O-ring on the crown and also the O-ring on the watch back. And now I need to replace the oscillating weight. The first reduction wheel, the hole in the first reduction wheel gets aligned with the brass post on the balance cock.
and the center of the oscillating weight gets lined up with the winding stem. And then we'll just screw that down into position. And now we can just replace the watch back. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. If you've not done so already, please consider subscribing to this channel. And if you click the bell icon when you subscribe, you will be informed whenever I upload new content. And if you are interested in learning more about watch repair then please be aware that i have a watch repair course available via my website which is linked in the description of this video